Hello, happy village music tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Sun, The Shattered Lands with me, Blue Ankylo. Still live, still streaming. And uh, today, we're going to explore Tia Quetzal Village, I think it's called. And uh, this is really our first main stopping point after escaping from uh, slavery. And uh, maybe we'll learn a little bit about that Veiled Alliance. Some people seem to think we're part of it. I don't think we are. Also, there's another one of these uh, monolisks here. Hmm. If only, or obelisks, I guess is the name. If only we had uh, some more magic gems. Maybe, maybe we'll figure out what those do. Uh, anyway, before we just randomly explore the village, let's head up towards the town hall, I guess. Although maybe it'd be nice to stop by this kind of looks like a merchant guy. He's a bowyer. Greetings, my fine friends. Can I interest you in archery supplies? Show me what you got. I will sell goods to you, but you mustn't let the council know. Here, inspect them as you please. You'll not find a faster bow anywhere, which will improve your range better than draw weight. Alright, so he's got garbage bows. Garbage slings. <laughs> uh, Two-handed staff slings. Chatkas for your three creens. And arrows. Basically nothing, but you could sell stuff. Uh, we have 400 gold, 400 uh, ceramic pieces, um, which is not very much. But, you know, there's other things. So... Can we... Yeah, we can just sell stuff. I think you get the straight value too. I don't think you get like half price or anything in this game. 543. Yeah, that's it. See, this is why holding on to a bunch of junk at the beginning of the game is not a terrible idea. Because you actually get the full trade value of things. Which is kind of interesting. And it means if you have batches of magic arrows, they're actually worth quite a lot. But uh, first off, let's just clear this inventory a bit. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there's any reason to hold on to gems. I mean, maybe I'm making a huge mistake, but... Fruit we're going to hold on to, because some of these have some really nice properties. Although some of them are also just, they cause poison, so it doesn't really matter. Take it or leave it. But you can see our tiny amount of uh, money is already expanding very quickly. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, the big trick is to sell one of those wands early on. Like, the wand of magic missiles is kind of nice, but you could just sell it. I don't need that, because the check is only worth one gold. Pointless. Alright, so let's just have boxes full of fruit, so I don't accidentally eat it. At some point, I will organize my fruit and decide which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to get rid of. Um, this is just four arrows, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we don't get full price for those. That's interesting. It says 5300 bucks. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth holding on to. I guess it's less money than I was expecting, so I won't sell it yet. I don't think you should... S it's worth a lot of money, but I don't think you should sell the metal detecting wand. I feel like there was maybe a quest that used the vulture to feed somebody, but we may have missed it. I know these necklaces are just... Yeah, they're garbage. They're not even... They're just trash we found down in the sewers, really. bunch of gems, the poisonous guavas, the only fruit that we're selling because all it does is cast poison on you if you try to eat it. I'm pretty sure anyway. Maybe I'll hold on to one just in case there's like a quest where you give it to somebody, but I don't think you need poison fruit. I don't think I need this key either, but move it in there. Oops. Probably don't need the water anymore as well, but... Look how much nicer our inventory is, now that we've got a merchant. So we've got a bunch of garbage rings. Yeah, and it's nice to have all the money too, I mean that's... We haven't found anything to buy yet, of course, but... Uh, one day, one day. Uh, I think... I don't think we need the wooden staff, the parting staff either anymore. 
I'm not sure, because it's like a quest item, there might be another use for it somewhere. We used it to get to Dagalar's lair, but... I don't think we need this either, honestly. Okay, that seems like arrows don't give us full price. Most everything else gives us full price, except the arrows. But we'll hold on to the fruit for now. I will eventually spend some time looking at our fruit. For now, though, let's just uh, get rid of nonsense items. Hold on to some quest items, just in case they turn out to be worthwhile. We'll put our boxes kind of up at the top. We d oh, yeah, there's my scrolls. I knew I had a couple more scrolls I could scribe. Have to decide who gets those. Yeah, I probably should have just dropped on the ground anything that was worth less than, like, 50 or 100 bucks. Because it's just chump change, you know. Alright, well, let's just keep the scrolls together for now. And the book. I'll have a look at what they do later. I promise. Eventually, I'll remember to look at them. wonder how high the stack can go. In Goldbox Companion, it went up to 255, so it might be. Or Goldbox Companion. In the Goldbox series. Okay, that's the ring we don't want to get rid of. Unless you want to get rid of it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like it does very much damage. 1 to 6 plus the armor class of the creature. Hmm. Okay, so Wand of Missiles. Yeah, that's the one worth it. Mm. A lot of money. I think we just sell it. Yeah, you get full price. Wow. There you go. Don't worry about selling all those arrows. Just sell that one staff and or that one wand and you're good. Hope I don't regret it, but because you can't buy stuff back or anything, but uh, I feel like that was a pretty good deal. They do have, like, a, a hidden number of charges before they deplete, too. So it's not like we could just keep using the magic missiles forever, you know. 65,000 gold, it might have given us 10 or something charges or 15 charges, but... And I guess if you knew the exact number, you could try to use it until it had one left. And then sell it, but... Yeah. Uh, why did I hold on to all this garbage, man? I guess... I probably should have used the metal axe instead of the bone sword, technically. Like, the bone sword has a minus one penalty. The metal axe does not. Alright, so that's that one. Some more garbage. Bone maces. I guess if you're fighting skeletons or something, it might be better. But I don't think there's a lot of... I mean, we found a blunt immune enemy, but I don't know if there's a lot of slashing, piercing immune enemies. Oh, Merlon's gem. That's the gem we were supposed to give him when we broke out of the uh, arena, but we gave him... I guess he accepts any gem, and we found something else. Maybe it was worth more? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to say that's enough selling for now. That looks a little better. Clean that up. Remember me if you ever need archery supplies. What's that target over there, though? Yes, I set that up so my customers can see the quality of my goods for themselves. You're welcome to use it. Why wouldn't you sell to me? Uh, because of the prophecy. Talk to the council if you really want to know. I don't believe any of that nonsense. Excuse me, I gotta fetch some arrows. Fletch some arrows. Good luck. There you go. We're amazing archers. It flies high. No, come on. We hit it right in the middle. Center of the rip target. There you go. <laughs> Alright, so. One merchant. There's probably some more. And we're probably not allowed to shop technically. We're just talking them into it. Because of some dumb uh, prophecy. Uh, are you the warriors Charles said were coming? Maybe? That's good news. No doubt you wish to equip yourself on a brave mission. I stock a variety of weapons. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. Hmm. Obsidian swords. Bone pole arms. 
bone maces. At least they have metal swords, I guess. So if you have people that have non-magical obsidian with a minus one penalty, you could at least get rid of that penalty. I have just the one left, I guess. I might as well upgrade it while we're here. I think this is our last garbage weapon. And I, you know, clearly we have some money. <laughs> what are these? Two-handed bone cal... Calhulax? I don't know what that is. Some sort of dark sun weapon. But, yes, no magic gear. Kind of all garbage. I wonder if these are worth anything. No. Remember me if you need garbage weapons. At least he had metal swords, you know, that's better than nothing. We've got a cool well. China slakes her thirst with a draft of cool water. And now the water's gone. <laughs> and now we could climb down the well. You know, let's just climb down the well, why not? It's Dragon Quest, right? Dragon Quest rules. What do we find at the bottom of the well? <laughs> Just a little house? Part of a gigantic dungeon. Let's go talk to some shadow monsters living at the bottom of the well. Ah, visitors! I've lived... I've been alone for so long. Still, leave this place at once lest the curse of the dead descends upon you. Hi, I'm China. I'm Dinan. Once the master of this Temple of Ash. Temple of Ash? Reduced to ashes, this temple was once a great, magnificent focus of power. Where the great priests of Athos assembled to study their art, I was their teacher. What happened? Betrayal by one of the priests under my instruction. My pupils came from two cities. One to the east, one beyond the western horizon. A concubine in the western city bore her sorcerer king an exquisite daughter who was to be joined to a prince in the eastern land. When she came of age, the girl was brought to me for an education and we fell in love. Oh dear. Someone betrayed you? Apos was his name. He came from the eastern city. One night he discovered me and the girl together and betrayed our feelings to the sorcerer king. Uh, who was this uh, girl? Her name was Tristram. And uh, what did the Sorcerer King do, as if I need to ask? Oh, he sent Apos to destroy us, yes. Uh, using the Sorcerer King's power, he laid the temple to waste, and herein trapped the spirits of all my servants, and myself, and Tristram. He made sure we could never be together. Well, will you help? Well, <laughs> what do you want me to do? There are two heart crystals. Bring them to me. One is mine, and the other belongs to Tristram. What exactly is a heart crystal? Uh, they are tokens of affection, but also much more. The heart crystal I gave Tristram is made from a gem from her very essence. I was crafting another heart crystal in my chambers. This one was made of my spirit when doom befell my temple. I fear that my heart crystal will be near impossible to find, as raiders took it long ago. I no longer feel it near me, so it must be on the surface of Athos somewhere. Alright, but really, where are they? Tristram has her own heart crystal, if the looters have not yet taken it. Find Tristram and get her heart crystal. The other heart crystal was in my quarters, through the northern doorway in the main temple. Bandits stole it a long time ago, but once you find the crystal, wherever the bandits hid it, use it while standing in the circle in this room, and you will teleport to the main temple. Why can't you do it? <laughs> Well, you see, my spirit is locked in this room, just like Tistram's is surely locked in some other cold chamber. When you speak with her, be direct. Repeat yourself, if necessary. Because of my mortal discipline, I have maintained my sanity. Uh, Tristram was a fine student, but had not learned enough to protect her mind from years of living in the void. You're sure she's here? Apos came to me and bragged about what he'd done. Alright, where is she again? I don't know. Look, she's in her chambers or something. Just be persistent. And uh, how will the heart crystals help you? Uh, 
Uh, I cannot break the curse from here. Apos did not know how to properly wield the Sorcerer King's power. There is a way to escape the trap. I believe Tristram and I um, can place our crystals in the... Our spirits in the heart crystals. Then you can take us to a place where we can be together. And I will tell you where once you bring me the crystals. And uh, how do you enter the heart crystal? Uh, when the heart crystal is activated near me, I'll be drawn into it. As long as the crystal is not within the circle. <laughs> this is a very complicated quest for later. And how will you reward me? Yes. Well, there are treasures in this place. Only I can tell you how to find. Uh, the information's all I can offer. Alright, I'll try to help you someday. I believe Tristram and I can place our spirits in the heart crystals. Then you can take us to blah blah blah. We already explained all this. You'll have my gratitude forever. <laughs> so, uh, we can't even really get in here yet. Um, we need his heart crystal. And then once we find it on the surface, we can use this to, uh to get around. Also, we're just going to take this with us. Um, <laughs> then we can enter the spirit temple through the teleporter, I believe. And this is like his main chamber in the temple. Uh, we probably will find Tristram somewhere like this. Maybe. And uh, it doesn't look like there's much else in this temple, but, you know, there's at least one more spirit and a bunch of zombies. So, we'll be back some other time. But for now, I don't think there's anything else we can do in this room. Basically, just keep an eye out for a crystal, a heart crystal, in bandit layers, right? How do I get out, though? <laughs> there we go. Just gotta find the right pixel to leave. So that's what they've got living in the uh, well underneath the town. Sounds kind of dubious, to be honest. There we go. Filled the well back up anyway. Just used the uh, device there. Hello, traveler. Watch your use of the well. I don't mind giving water to thirsty strangers, but I'll not have them abusing it. Now, if you excuse me, I'm quite busy. He's just uh, the well guy, I guess. Well, well, well. Let's go to the uh, mayor now. You see, you see, the visionary was right. Here are the ones who will fulfill the prophecy. Tia Quetzal will survive. Greetings, hero. I'm Chal, leader of the Tia Quetzal. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, my name's China. I'm honored, China. Now that we have names to match the pictures that the visionary drew. Yeah, what what exactly are you talking about, buddy? Oh, the visionary's prophecy! Tia Quetzal is doomed, but you... Uh, what our noble leader means to say is that a prophecy of doom is on Tia Quetzal. And you fit the prophecy's description. You are the heroes who will save Tia Quetzal, just like the visionary said. Well, maybe tell me the prophecy, I guess. Ah, uh, the visionary can tell you better... What's important is that an army will soon de destroy Tia Quetzal and all the desert villages. He says this ruin will stretch from Silt Sea to beyond the Badlands. Uh, where's this army come from? Uh, the village, the visionary doesn't really say, but uh, probably Draj. <sighs> Draj is the only place with an army, <laughs> but I've heard nothing that indicates war. And uh, who are you guys? I'm Quern, the chief lieutenant here in Tia Quetzal. And uh, you seem to interrupt your chief a lot. Not everyone in the village shares Charles' belief. Even though he is our leader, I merely voiced concerns of those who disagree. Ah, caravans of weapons have already gone to Draj. War preparations are right are coming right now. Ah, how much time we got? Oh, the visionary is unsure, but it can't be too long. Why do you believe this prophecy? Well, his predictions are always true. And now you're here. There can be no doubt. Yeah, but not all of us believe it. I say Tia Quetzal would do better to take care of our own concerns without worrying about the world. If the world falls about our ears, do you think we can survive? Tell me about this visionary. We found him in the desert, tortured by the visions and half-crazed from the sunstroke. After he regained his health, he went into a trance and revealed his prophecy. I guess I should go talk to him. Yeah, his health to the northwest. And who is he? No one really knows. Uh, the sun, visions, burned away his memory. 
Why should I help you guys? Oh, you must help. Uh, your only chance. Ah, don't help us. Athos is a cruel world. Everyone for himself. TA Quest will survive before we arrived, and we'll do so when you're gone. Ah, don't listen to him. Quarren's just jealous. <laughs> and what exactly do you want me to do, anyway? Uh, we can't fight Draj alone. Our only hope is to join with the other ex-gladiator villages. You must convince them to join us. And why do you think a alliance would work? We don't have a choice. The villagers are easy prey to Draj by themselves. The visionary also said a great uprising from the desert will defeat the army. Others of us, though, believe it's better to just be independent and move. <laughs> move quickly, yes, but move to make the alliance and prepare for war. Uh, what do I get? <laughs> well, Tia Quetzal is in a wealthy village, but we'll give you what we can. And where are these other villages? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> villages don't really talk to each other. Maybe you can go west. <laughs> what a great quest. Go get an alliance with all the desert villages. Where are they? I don't know. Are you sure there are other villages, or are you just sending me on a fool's errand? Uh, I'll help you, because thou must. And some bonus experience, of course. Excellent! This is the best news I've had in a long time. Make your visit to the visionary. He'll help you in your mission. You'll also find gifts in your house. Second to the southeast. Yeah, he just gives us a house. He should have opened with that, honestly. But at least now... We won't be getting dialogue with random, you know, people out in the desert asking them to join the Alliance and have no idea what we're talking about. At least now you know why we're asking people to join the Alliance. <laughs> Alright, what should I do? You must visit the villages! Yeah. And how will you help? Well, uh, we'll try to gather some information about Draj's movements while you're gathering allies and, uh... You know, we'll house and feed anyone you meet and if you want it, speak to me or my lieutenant. We'll be, uh... In the house on the side of the meeting hall. The council will see your needs and reward you with each... Reward you with experience every time an alliance is sealed. Good luck! <laughs> Could be worse. Could be worse. They gave us a house. They'll give us bonus experience. And what else are we going to do, really? How can I help you? Any news on the war? Nope. How long till the army? Eh, no idea. What are our chances of victory? Nothing. <laughs> Any word on the alliance? Nope, no allies. <laughs> what should I do? Eh, find some villages. But where are they? I don't know. Go south. <laughs> one says west, one says south. Very helpful. Alright, I'm out of here. Thanks, council members. You're as good as any committee I've ever been on. Alright, so we've got uh, some houses to check up on. I think we'll just go to the northwest first. This is uh, like the lieutenant's house or something. He doesn't really want us here, but, you know. It's fine. Oh no, this is the mayor's house. Hey, Tial. What you want? Do you think we can win? Ah, uh, we got a tough fight. There's no denying it, but once you made some allies, we'll hold our own. What's the strategy? We all run in there and fight head on. You guys are the mages. You could figure it out. <laughs> we fight till they're defeated or we're dead. Determination to fight and die is strategy enough. Yeah, we're going to need a new tactician. <laughs> What's the strategy and army doing? Uh, no troop movement, but that'll change. Tell me about your village. Uh, it's like other villages that I've never been to or found or know where they are. Everyone here felt the slave master's whip and risked our lives to escape it. How are the villages doing? Well, the visionaries' prophecies worry them, and they'll come around as soon as you bring some allies. They'd all be dead as slaves if they weren't good folk. And, uh, what? This Quarren guy, he's gonna be next mayor? Well, I'm not dead yet. When I am, the villagers can decide. Uh, I'm too old to expect people to be thinking about it, though, especially with a war threatening. Would Quarren be a good leader? Uh, he's plenty smart, but I think he cares too much about himself. Leader's got to be ready to make sacrifices for the village. Alright, I'm done with this. Let's get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Too much chatting. 
He's got a, a really, really large axe, though. I feel like our, um, our China, the half giant, could get some value out of that gigantic sword. But, uh, sadly, we can't pick them up. I don't think there's anything we can even loot in here. For shame. He's got a pretty nice house, though. I guess we should go check our house out. So, this is the lieutenant guy's house. I mean, maybe we'll go check him out first. The two, like, leaders of the village. Uh, pathfinding is working out really well. <laughs> Just giving us a tour of the town hall again. I mean, these guys might do a little bit better if they had doors in their houses, but hey, it's it's a sand village. What can you get? Where's the wood, really, right? All right, Lieutenant Quarin. What is it, China? I can only spare a few minutes. What are you so busy? Well, if Tia Quetzal's to prosper, a market area must be built to attract caravans. Fields must be planted and goods must be made for surplus. This won't happen on its own. You kind of sound like you're taking charge of the place. I will be the leader soon enough. Something you should do well to remember. And why should you be the leader? I'll bring wealth to this village. Or yourself. It's the same thing. If I'm wealthy, the villagers will live better. Hmm. What's up with this Chal guy? The village needs fresh ideas. Chal's old. He thinks you can build a wall, put bread on the table. It's fine if you're a stupid mule, but there's better things in life. And how come you haven't challenged him yet? Why would I do that? Old age will take care of him. I'm not impatient. What kind of trading do you want? We'll buy raw material like obsidian or wood from the caravans. Make tools. Sell them to the back to the caravans. And exactly why would they deal with you? Well, I control the only reliable well in the area. The caravans will come for that, if nothing else. Isn't Tia Quetzal already doing pretty well? That's the attitude of a dog following a dying master. Too many people here have it. Never be satisfied. That's the only way you'll get her head in this life. What about this war? What war? The only one I've heard about is in the visionary's head. What about yourself? My life is none of your business. I'm just curious, man. Curious gets you dead. So, why are you so belligerent? <laughs> I don't like you. You crawl in here from the desert and expect everyone to bow to your wishes just because sunstruck visionary calls you hero. Mercenaries more like it. I didn't ask anyone to bow. I just walked in and said, hi, my name's China. And then everyone gave me a house and said you're going to save the planet. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll have a chat with this guy later, I'm sure. Seems like he might not be totally on board the team... Uh, Team's ally that with the villagers plan. All right, so we got somebody in here, just some villager working. Hello, traveler. Is there something I can do for you? I'm China. Pleased to meet you, China. My name's Kvetka. And what are you doing? Or how's it going? I don't know. But <laughs> what are you doing anyway? Scrubbing stains off of pots, cleaning things. Cool. And uh, what's the visionary up to? Wish I could understand him. You can tell he's saying something important. I just can't understand it. Tell me about your leader. Chal is strong, but Tia Quetzal outgrow him. We need someone who can do more than just fight. Goodbye. All right, so she's on team... Uh, team Quarin. Also, there's a hole in the wall. It's very suspicious. Little baby crib type thing. It's a pretty cool little house, though, for... Compared to some of these houses. What's this guy doing walking around? Just a guard. I guess he's allowed to walk around. Excuse me, I must patrol the village. If you notice any spies, report them at once. Spies? I didn't think there'd be spies here, but now you got me worried. Alright, let's head down this way. Another house? Hello, traveler. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, my name's China. My name's Jarek. How's it going? It won't be much of a war if you don't find some allies. You seem to have lots of water. 
That's right. Water for everyone. Village is great, but our leader's too lazy. Tell me about your leader. Chal lets the council make all the decisions. What we need is a leader who will take charge. Now, goodbye. Hmm, looks like a lot of the villagers are on Quarren's side right now. Also, this place has lots of chests. <laughs> and a place to sleep. I think this is supposed to be our house. So you can use these for storage if you don't want to carry stuff around. You can't pick them up. Also. Oh, look! Magic swords. Another reason to come to this town early. Got some more fruit. We could carry these chests with us if we wanted. Money? So, uh, somebody set us up pretty well in this town. Even just that one sword is pretty much worth coming here right away. So, Swift Bite. It's a plus two bone long sword. Which is better than a plus one sword. There. So now... Uh, China and Strange Mind both have magic weapons. A plus two and a plus one. Plus one and a plus one, I believe, yeah. Uh, we don't have any magic weapons for Miss Grabby or Blue Anculas yet. Well, I guess technically the Chameleon Gloves are magic, but yeah, it doesn't do much damage. But um, blindness is neat. Um, but yeah, means buying that metal longsword was kind of a waste because, you know. Oh, right, this is magic too. So three people have magic weapons. That's five magic one-handed weapons out of eight. So, you know, we're getting there. So that's a nice find. Let's keep visiting houses. There's a few left. Hello, travelers. Is there something I can do for you? I'm China. I'm Itua. So how's the war going? No allies. What are you doing? Making furniture. Where are other villages? I don't know. It's a secret to everyone. Try to save us a little bit of time here, not necessarily reading all the repeated text. No! That is not what I meant to do. And that was definitely an accident. <laughs> if it weren't for a prophecy, you would be banished. Don't let it happen again. Wait. No, no, we're not trying to... Dang it. <laughs> Maybe we can get out of it. Hello, Traveler! Something I can do for you? Uh, after shooting you with an arrow twice, uh, my name's Blue Anculas. I'm Garai. <laughs> Who's Domini? Well, Master. And how's it going? Uh, Templars think they'll sweep through the isolated villages, but the Isle Alliance is gonna save us. And then water, yeah. Alright. Can we not kill this person? Accidentally. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, just leave. It was a misclick and I haven't saved since I went to the village. I don't want to redo this all again. I know mostly all we've done is talk, but... I actually don't know if we can run away. I'm not sure if there's really a mechanic for that. Oh yeah, it works. Let's just make sure the guards don't immediately kill us. We're cool, right? Alright. Now I want to test out if I can go back into that uh, room. I mean, we probably don't need to go talk to that person ever again, but I don't want to be stuck in hostile. Um, it's black, which means hostile. But we were allowed to talk to her mid-combat, so if there is a quest... Tash, stay, you little weasel! Excuse me, but please don't let my pet weasel loose. Oh. I'm sorry, I was just curious. That's fine, but don't come to me if you end up with rabies. Okay, maybe we've reset this a little bit. 
No, she's still black flashing. Well, at least there's a way to talk to her. Hopefully that hasn't messed up too much. If I was saving more regularly, I probably would have reloaded that one. Because I definitely didn't mean to shoot her. <laughs> one more house. Let's, let's try not to get into too much more trouble. So many holes. Ah, this is the visionary. Right, right, right. You have come! The shadows of my vision are flesh! The veil is lifted to reveal the face of freedom! I told you... I was told you'd help. <laughs> ah, I do! Something to aid! A magical rod! To take you where stones have life! How do I use this? Retrieve the sparkling hearts of the standing stones! With their life returned, the stones can call! In ignorance, Tia Quetzal's heart was cast down the watery shaft! What? What are you talking about? Walk the narrow path, your fate demands you seek forgotten ways. Gather to your breast the foes of hateful fear. Uh, yeah, who are you? I am the voice, you are the hand. Take hold your doom before the wolf devour the land. You're the voice of what now? The voice of the wind that blows away, obscuring sand and breathes life into the shadows. Why am I the hand? Dream hand held high to stay the axe's fall. Each star, each moon, all one fearful symmetry. And a wolf? Jealousy of the moon's sway, the wolf gorges on their brilliance. In endless gluttony, now the beast is spread, his prey at hand. What is my fate? <laughs> Your fate! To tame the winds of change, or be flung from the precipice. Teetering on the edge, you must forge upon... Forge support, lest you fall. I feel like the sun has blasted your brain. The sun cast down its spear, and now I walk in shadow. You seek a shade, too, where spite holds still its burning tongue. So, he's just telling us to go to the well. Uh, but didn't he give us a rod? Yeah, he gave us Lod's rod. It's not Lloyd's rod. But, uh, we can probably figure that out with a little bit of riddling. I have a feeling this is one of those things where if you play it when you're eight years old and have no idea how video games work, you have a much harder time. But we'll be fine. Knuckle bones. China shakes the bones and let them fall where they may. The visionary peers over. Fate smiles on your fortune this turn. As you can see, though ill fortune no doubt awaits you too. That's, yeah, I can definitely tell. He's also got a bunch of children's toys, probably. And a hole in the wall. So, uh... You guys want to know what the uh, obelisk actually do? Where is it? It's not on the map, but there it is. So you uh, you put their hearts in them. Now that we've got two of them, you can take the heart out, I guess. And then if we take Lord's rod. How do we do this? There we go. What do you wish, master? Uh, hello, Rod. I am the finest creation of the awe-inspiring Lord. I was with him until his final days. What can I wish for? The Dread Mage Lord endowed me with many great powers. Alas, the secret to many are lost to time's fell hand, never to be recovered. So what can you do? There are many great obelisks scattered around the desert, which emit a powerful aura when active. My powers enable me to home in on the auras and transport several objects, such as you humans, to that spot. Oh. We have fast travel, guys. That's pretty good. What are these obelisks? Built before the Sea of Silt form, the blah 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 blah. It's just obelisks. How do you, how do you activate them? Put the gem in it. Where are these gems? On the ground. Where are these obelisks? On the ground. And then that's it. We could, we could tell us some more history. Anyway, we'll talk to the rod some more later, but this is just auto-teleporting. It's pretty handy. It's a good thing. I guess someone really wants me to give the crazy visionary something. I don't think I have what you think I have. If you're supposed to give him some some drugs. I don't think I have anything other than fruit right now.
I mean, we could give them some poison guavas. But I don't think I have much else. We could read through his text a bit more, but I don't know. He's, he's kind of frustrating to deal with, to be honest. Anyway, Lodge Rod was definitely worth a present there. We still have, like, one more house to visit. Or two more houses, even. So one of our main quests will be to deal with the shadow in the well. And we'll get more stones for more teleporting as we travel around. This looks like an armor merchant, even. G'day, how can I help? Show me your goods. Do we get good armor? We probably do not. Oh, yeah, there you go. No, still just AC1. Not even better than normal. Oh, speaking of that, we might as well get rid of our garbage doesn't do anything armor. Just so we've got room for... Uh, actual magic stuff in the future when we eventually get better stuff now at least a helmet does something but See, like these helmets do nothing so we can get rid of that stuff yeah okay so does he have anything worth buying Doesn't look like it. Just the two pages. This is a lot of money for technically metal armor that doesn't give us any advantage mechanically. It's kind of too bad. Oh well. Forgive me. Remember me if you need armor. Yeah, you need to give me something better than garbage armor though. I've been... I've never been so busy. Everyone needs armor for the war. There's not enough to make it... Time to make it all. You're welcome to use the forge if you need. I'm too busy to custom make anything. Now, if you leave... Excuse me, I've got work to do. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. We can make stuff. If you know what you're doing. The cold radiates heat as China forces air over them. There you go. But yeah, there's actually like some... There's like a smithing quest. I forget exactly what you do with it, but... There's definitely something you put in there later. And then you heat it up and then you smack it. But, uh, I don't think there's anything we can do with it right now. I could be wrong, but I don't think there is. Just remember that there's a forge here we can technically use later. I wonder, it's possible the shop sells better stuff as you get more allies, too. I'm not 100% sure, but that seems possible. And then last house. Father Garen. I'm Father Garum, cleric of the village. I'm China. It's an honor to meet you, China. The visionary spoke a great deal about you. All right, uh, what's that thing on the wall? <laughs> it produces an extract of great restorative value. However, I do not have the Ranike tree pith that I need to make the extract. Would you go to my supplier and retrieve it? Sure. You are most kind. Notaku, my supplier, is usually found southeast of Tiaquetzal. Where the sand turns red. I have been there, but maybe not quite found this person. So look for Notaku in the red sands. Any other uh, help? What do you know about that visionary? He has become a good friend of mine, and I can tell you he is a seer of great power. Do not let his old odd manner disturb you. Many truths are entwined in the ravings. What about the little uh, churl guy? Chal guy. <laughs> Like most mules, is a simple soul, raised from birth to be a Templar's bodyguard. Everything he does is motivated by a desire to protect. Does he uh, make a good leader? Oh, many times Chal kept Tia Quetzal from harm against out of sheer determination, standing firm against the heavy odds. It's no surprise Tia Quetzal is the center of resistance against Raj. How does this protective spirit serve him? It's his greatest strength, though his single-mindedness makes him short-sighted. It has caused him trouble more than once. Like what? Well, in Nibbane, Chal's master gave him a girl child to protect, but when she reclaimed the child for a ritual, Chal defied her. 
This, the idea of willingly placing his charge at peril was too much. How, I don't know, but he survived the Templar's wrath and brought the child to safety. What about this child? She lived with us. She lived with us to this day. Her name's Katara, and Chal made her his adoptive daughter. I do not think she ever revealed... To, I don't think he ever revealed to her the whole story of her parentage. What about this Templar? I forgot his name. Chal does not like to speak of her. Apparently, she was a close advisor to the Shadow King. How about this uh, lieutenant dude? Well, I'm not one for politics, so Quarren and I have little contact. He's the one responsible for Tia Quetzal's prosperity. He's ambitious, though, and not to be crossed lightly. What about you? Little to say, I'm a humble cleric trying to live in this village. What what elemental do you like? <laughs> the elemental sphere of water, yay. And you keep the well working? Domini is the well master. He has a great affinity for water and would make a powerful cleric if he weren't so enamored by mechanics. You seem kind of busy for a small village. My work is never done. Sandstorm swept through, leaving dozens of people sandblasted. Others were attacked by dune reapers. The list is endless. Since Chal founded it many years ago, it was I, in fact, who healed the wounds he suffered escaping slavery. Health and long life to you, friend. Goodbye. So we need to find some medicine stuff to make this work. And uh, I think that's it for this place, maybe. He does have a cool magic water bin here. I mean, that would make a pretty cool uh, room ornament, right? Little tidal wave machine just working in the background. I guess we could talk to the well guy now that we're officially living in the town, I guess. Maybe. I don't think there's too much more to do here, though, to be honest. I'm China. Hi, China. We're grateful that you're living here. I'm Domini, the Wellmaster. Any uh, good rumors? A train of wagons passed through the other day heading southeast. Couldn't tell from the well if it was a caravan or a war party. Yeah, we already found that place accidentally. Might have been nice to save that for after we had a village to invite them to. Uh, we may have already messed up a quest technically by doing that before we came here, but oh well, we'll just have to live with it. Um, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making a brace for the wellhead. Tell me about the well. There seems to be some ghosts in it. <laughs> My well may be humble to look at, but there's none finer. It's watered Tia Quetzal since the first stone was laid, and it will keep flowing when we're all dust. How do you know it won't dry up? Well, one plot of desert may look like just another, but the shape of the dunes and the texture of the sands tell me what's underneath, like a magic portal to some water. <laughs> There's not just more sand under the sand? Of course not. There's a layer of clay under the sand there, and that keeps the water flowing. Just to the west, it looks like a heap of jumbled stone barely covered to sand. I don't know what that would be. Alright, uh, how are the villagers doing? Can't no one get the water without talking to me. Besides, I've been here from the beginning. I don't care. <laughs> Most of this is just pretty repetitive. You guys get the gist of what the deal is with Chal and, and the other dude. I think there is probably one more thing we can do with the stone if we decide to ask for travel. No, no, we can only see the two that we've activated. I thought there might be one that started activated, but we've already turned the red sand into a Quetzal on already, but... Uh... Maybe one day we'll find some more shortcuts. Alright. Well, I don't want to spend too much more time this episode, but I'd like to at least get a little bit more exploring out of the way here. So let's leave the village and at least look a little bit around. Should probably save though before we get eaten by sand sharks. You know, we haven't done any combat this episode at all, so... We should try to get something done. Doesn't look like there's any monsters around this time. Uh, eventually we're going to go deal with the Saurians quest. We might even be able to invite this guy back into the village at some point. For now, um, I'm going to head back to the Red Sand area and see if uh, there's someone new over there for that quest. I also feel like maybe I should try the caravan area again. and Just because it's like areas we've already been to. And there seems to be some quests kind of in that direction. So let's see if that leads to anything right now. Let's see. We 
We've got some earth elementals. Scorpions for sale. Um, magic identifying guy. I guess we'll go fight the uh, earth elementals while we're here. But I didn't see anybody else. I think if we go east from this area, we get to a fairly dangerous dungeon that does have some good stuff in it. But I'm not sure I want to do that right now. Ah, oh, these guys are chumps. Lesser Earth Elementals, no big deal. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you can go east here and you'll get to a pretty dangerous area. North, I don't think is particularly dangerous. But I want to see if that caravan is still down here. I, I forget exactly, but... Because we ran into them so early... We didn't really have a way to offer them somewhere safe to go. Because their wagon was destroyed. But theoretically, I think you can send them to the village. So let me just double check if they're down here. Maybe we'll run into them again at some point later. I don't know. I forget. But, you know, there's a lot of event chains in this game that are kind of... You know, a little glitchy. Whether it's by design or... Or mistake. There's definitely a few things that you, I think you can miss out on. Ooh, those are dangerous. Those are Dune Reapers. And those guys are not too bad, just trines. Well, we'll uh, we'll give this a fight. Uh, I think <laughs> in this situation, let's be a little bit cautious. Let's put on some defenses. Also, Blue Anculas is not healed up. That seems to be a mistake. Thought we rested. Did I forget to rest when I was at my house? Good old Cure Light Wounds. Getting the job done. 5 HP at a time. Or, uh, I guess it averages like 4 HP at a time. But anyway, there we go. All right, let's put on more defenses while we're thinking about it. Put displacement on, biofeedback. Displacement. Biofeedback. I think that's all of the basic protection spells that we'd want against um, melee combat. Mind Blank is pretty good if you're gonna get into uh, Psionic battles, obviously. Is there any other spells we might want to enchant? Flame Blade, I think, is pretty good for offense. I guess Bark Skin works too. I think. I think it does. Minus one armor class. Let's test this out. Didn't work. Must be interfering with our current armor. Okay, none of those are going to help us. Dispel magic. Magical vestments. Plus one for every three levels above level five. This should be plus one then? Didn't even seem to make a difference. Theoretically, that spell should have made her body armor, you know, plus one magical. But it didn't seem to make any difference. Like I said, sometimes armor class protection type spells are a little bit finicky. Reaction. Not many uh, particularly useful spells there right now. I mean, Mirror Image would help a little bit, I guess. Of course, Fireball. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to check out... There was a couple more of those uh, kinetic or uh, psionic abilities, like... Power check fails... So that should have given us... It should have been plus one to hit with the weapon that got grafted to our our hand, basically. Like, Although it seems like we can't have all of these... Hmm. It's interesting that these show it cast, but not in the uh, the list of effects. Definitely interesting. 
Any other abilities I want to turn on? I think that's it for now. Alright, let's give this a shot. What could possibly go wrong? Well, we got lots of buffs anyway. So yeah, these guys, uh... Dune Reapers are only level 6, but I definitely remember them being fairly dangerous. So let's try not to underestimate them here. Maybe we'll try an acid arrow. Who knows? Five damage did something. Yeah, they're fairly tanky, but we can at least kill one before it gets an attack. That would be great. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It gets like four attacks and looks like it can do like 15 damage per hit. Yeah. I mean, we did just fine, but in theory, it could possibly one round my low HP characters if uh, if it got lucky. So. Now, to be fair, China doesn't have very good armor class, so it's easier to hit her. Those spells, I, I swear I put on the minus three armor class spells, but it didn't seem to stick. You know, I've said before, I'm not super familiar with how the psionics work in this game. Sometimes it seems to work really well. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. Anyway, we can we can beat up some uh, desert porcupines or whatever they are. Eh, they're not that bad. Not sure if they're really worth the experience to fight. I think the Dune Reapers were probably worth a fair bit, but... Look, Blue Ankylas got a level up. Like I said, the experience is not that bad. All right, so this is uh, this must be level six preserver. So we've already got Fireball, and the other mage has uh, haste. We could take slow, maybe hold person, maybe blink, maybe. Hmm. Well, you've already got Fireball. I guess we could take a non-fire spell. Or like a non-damage spell. I think we'll take Hold Person. I guess... It's a classically good... I mean, I guess the Clerics have Hold Person at level 2 anyways. They might as well use it on the... You might as well use those cleric slots. <laughs> ah, who am I kidding? Make sure both of my mages have haste and fireball. Uh, Alright, so I expect... Yeah, so that was Blue Inky last getting Preserver 6 a little bit earlier. Miss Grabby will get it pretty quick. And we're yeah, maybe slowing down a little bit on the level ups, but only a little bit. Alright, well, unless we want to go back to the slave fields. Well, it's already been an hour. Let's try to get, like, one new screen opened up at least. So we'll go north from here, and then north one more time. I think that's also Red Sands. Or we could go east from here. I Well, maybe we'll go east. I don't know. We were told to go southeast of the village for the... The healer's drugs. We're looking for some trader. Oh, this might be him, actually. This might have just been one of those RNG open the area till he shows up kind of things. Some more of those guys to fight. This is, I think this is what I was looking for, actually. All 
All right, let me just save it here in case things go wrong. Oh, is this, this little guy up here? Can we talk to this guy? Can't interact with it. You can probably kill it, but it's just like a... It might be a pet. <laughs> Alright, Nataku. This is the guy we're looking for. Well met, travelers. I'm your servant, Nataku. What forces you into these desolate wastes? Yeah, someone uh, asked me uh, to buy some Rangnaik pith. Well, I'm grateful for your services in this matter. I was loath to make the journey myself as it would take time away from more profitable ventures. If you prove capable, we can share the profits. I mean, I plan to take it to Father Gear. Excellent! Deliver this bag of Rhinite Pith. Return after you've done so, and I'll pay you handsome. And well, why is he paying us to deliver... I guess... Sure. What's it for? Mainly for healing. Is that the only thing you need help with? Oh, it's not much. Business is rather slow. Although I could always use a few sand howler eyes and fire eel tongues, should you come across them. I'll pay handsomely for spell components. I assume we kill sand howlers and fire eels. <laughs> uh, how much will you pay for them? Uh, a few hundred ceramic pieces. Some percentage of that. Any uh, useful rumors? Caravan north of here was hit hard by raiders. So there's another caravan to the... Like, we went to the south, but there must be one to the north. How about this business? Ah, there's little to tell. I'm a simple merchant. What exactly is this business? Powerful mages require obscure materials to conduct arcane rituals. Hmm. Where do I fit into all this? The materials I need are rare and require overcoming dangerous beasts. So kill animals, sell him components... Make money. Profit. We don't he's not gonna tell us who his who his clients are. They're mages. Alright. So there you go. Now we've got a little shop down here where we can sell uh, monster parts. One thing that's pretty cool because we've got Lod's Rod, we don't actually have to walk back. It's not very far away, really, but uh, You know, just saves a bit of time. We're gonna kill these guys, then we're gonna get teleport back to town. Gotta grind that experience up, right? Yeah, that last hit is pretty serious on these guys. That one seems to be lost. Wonder why he can't move down. Silly old... Uh Whatever these things are called. Norns or something. Seems like their last attack is also more accurate. They very rarely miss that big hit at the end. Anyway. A little bit more experience. And if we... I wish we could have like a hotkey for this. It'd be really nice to have like a shortcut to this one. Alright. I would like to travel. I would like to travel back to the village. So, like, if you didn't ever visit the village at the beginning, you wouldn't even have your access to quick travel. You'd have to manually walk everywhere until you finally found this place. It's pretty handy. And there, this way we finished up a little quest for the prophet. You're back already? You got a bad attitude, man. Yes, yeah, the times are bad. Ain't nothing to do with us. Let's see what the uh, priest has for us. Father Garen, I have come to deliver you some pith. Oh, wonderful! I've been waiting for it. Lenera, a friend in Gedron, desperately needed the extract I made with this pith. Wait, you mean I have to do more? <laughs> Thank you! The extract will be made by mixing the pith with concoctions at the wall. When you're done, after you make the thing, you take it to Lenara. She's in Gedron, a village northwest of here. On the plus side... Until now, we had no idea where any of the villages were, but he actually knew where one of them was. So, thanks. Alright, well, I guess we're going to go do this. Uh, we're actually going to do all the work.
It was really difficult. But, now we have a pith extract. And if we can find that village to the northwest, we can give that to some girl. Alright, now we were also told, uh, let's not forget, that uh, the merchant that we picked this up from for free was going to pay us for delivering it to Father Garen. So, although he didn't give us anything, we should be rewarded for our travel. So let's go turn that in real quick. We'll, we do need to end this episode fairly soon, but uh, at the very least we'll turn this in. Check for more enemies. Oh yeah, we can kill those guys. Kill those guys too. Every time we come here we get a little bit more experience. Alright, Notaku. Well done! I see my confidence in you is well placed! Here's 500 bucks. And a thousand experience. And a level up! Alright, well, more fireballs. I mean... Are you ready for something more dangerous? Okay. <laughs> a certain client of mine has need of a terror bloom. An item so rare even I don't know where it is. However, the few writings I've seen all describe the death of rampagers. You'll undoubtedly face those beasts. Eh. Rampages are a little bit scary. How much will you pay? Ooh, considering the danger, I'm prepared to pay a premium. In fact, I am soon to acquire a magical wand, I think, that will more than repay you. And what exactly is a terror bloom? Well, that's hard to say. It's only through my client that I know of its existence. The writing he showed me suggests the essence of the bloom is used in the making of magical weapons. The lore master in Sedrite might know. Never... Where is Sedrite? Because that's somewhere we should probably go to. But I guess I'll try to find it. Wonderful! I suggest searching to the west. If nothing else, there's a lore master in Cedra. Cedrilte, I guess. And where is Cedrilte? Due west. It's quite a walk, but worth it. So, to the west is Cedrilte. And to the northwest of Tiaquetzal is Gedron. At least now we're starting to figure out where stuff is. And that's really the, uh... I feel like that's the real victory here. Rather than just wandering around the deserts with no idea where you're going. Having these people actually give you a little bit of a hint where the villages are. Even though the village leaders are like, I don't know where any villages are. I want to see how much experience we get here. So Blue Ankylas, let's just for the end here. She's got 41,768. And, you know, keep in mind that's times three, whatever the number goes up by. 41,763. Alright, we killed one thing. 41,763. So we get like 400 experience per kill right on these things. I think. Yeah, it looks like about 400. Not bad. Why is the walk cycle so fast? It just depends on what you want your, uh... Um... Your DOS box emulator settings at. You can slow it down if you want, but... I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> the game already plays relatively slowly, so... It was all just based on what kind of computer you had back in the day. Hey, how come Cure Serious Wounds is not curing serious wounds? That's not how that's supposed to work. I didn't actually change it though, I'm just using whatever the default settings are. But, it is just an emulator, so... Whatever you want to set in DOSBox, you can certainly tweak it to your preference. Okay, Cure Serious Wounds. That is interesting, why did that... Not cure serious wounds. Is protection from energy blocking that spell? That would be really annoying. Let's try this again. Yeah, protection from energy. Interesting. That's something I didn't realize. So if we use that psionic ability, which most of the time we wouldn't leave on, but it's pretty good against, you know, fireballs and stuff. Um, not inertial barrier. We, that's that's for breath attacks. But uh, 
Energy containment, there you go. Apparently this also blocks healing spells. Interesting. It doesn't say anything that would make me think that, but... I mean, it's good to know. Might as well learn these things fairly early on in the game. Alright, well that's all the healing we've got, so... Yeah, no, it's actually probably good. It's nice that there's... Like, some of the psionics are a little bit on the overpowered side, just... They have no upkeep, and they just block all damage from certain types. They seem pretty good. It's kind of nice that uh, they might have a, a downside, like, oh, you also can't be affected by healing magic. Now, I would expect these O2s to give us less experience than the, uh, the Norns, so... Uh, 41, 189, let's see if we can get a kill here. Forty-one. Yeah, these are only worth like 120 experience. So, it's probably not really worth going out of our way to kill these kinds of enemies. Just because they're not really worth very much. But it's... It's definitely possible if we travel around, and I know I need to end this episode, but... I just want to have a quick look to the east and to the north, maybe. Just to see come some new areas before we wrap this episode and stream up. Because we're basically at the end here. We could still go try to buy a, uh, a scorpion. I'm not sure it's worth the money right now. So I would probably suggest if you're playing for the first time not to head this direction, if I remember correctly, but we'll see. The areas do have random enemies, so any place could be deadly, but I sort of remember this being particularly deadly. Yeah, it's a bunch of saurians and a temple. I want to save this for a little later. It's pretty cool though, right? There's definitely some quests over in this area. And I don't want to tackle it just yet. But it gives you a little bit of an idea of where, uh, where we can go in the future. Where did we even start? Something there, I think. We started right here. Okay, cool. We'll be back later. If I remember correctly, that temple entrance there it gets us into a pretty interesting dungeon. But I don't think I'm ready for it just yet. Oh, look! More enemies! Uh, oh, those guys! Yeah, we haven't, fought, we haven't fought any of these yet. Let's go fight some of those guys. This this should be easy. And this will this will be a nice way to wrap up our stream, I think. These are just multi-eyed dogs. <laughs> they do have a lot of eyes, though. <laughs> so, these are sand howlers. And, uh... That's at least too, too many eyes. At least too, too many eyes. But probably more than too, too many. I don't remember them being particularly strong, but we'll, we'll just deal with these bad dogs. So for all that, we get a whole bunch of these eyes. And uh, the most annoying part of this is probably just managing your inventory. But this was a very convenient location to pick these up because this is the screen where the merchant wants rare monster reagents. So this is why I was so happy to run into these. Um, I think these are not worth very much, but, and in general I might not even bother picking them up because they don't stack and it's a lot of inventory space. But we happen to have the room right now, and uh, we got all these sand howler eyes, yeah. Alright, good. Let's go, uh, I guess we'll go beat up the O2s again for a couple hundred experience. There are, I, I actually remember a little bit as a kid, specifically loading these areas over and over again until you got the right enemies for a random combat, and you, some, eventually, you know, if you, if you pay enough attention, eventually you'll just come to know 
certain um, certain monsters are worth fighting for like thousands of experience rather than just a couple hundred. And uh, those are the ones you want to spend the time to go kill. But OTUs are kind of weak. Anyway, one thing I want to look at, I'm not sure if he's going to tell us the number, but we currently have 71,850 for gold. Let's see what we can turn this in for. Spell components. Sand Howler Eyes. 50 each. It's not even that much. Uh, can you do better? Haggling. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not possible. Prices are likely to go down. Is up. I can't afford to take the risk. Alright. So there you go. We killed some... Some eyeball dogs. And we got 1,700 gold. So he actually gave us more. He said he'd give us 50 gold each. This is 100 each. Interesting. I guess we asked for more and he ended up doubling the price anyway. I, did, I thought he said he wasn't going to. Anyway, cool. Always haggle. You know, this is a world where you gotta haggle. Now, obviously, we didn't really need that money. It doesn't really make much. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice way to make a bit of cash early on. Uh, I don't know how regularly you'll see those sand dogs, but uh, hey, good stuff. Okay, I think we're going to, uh, well, I guess we could go rest. So we'll go home, because I really do need to have a nap. And I I must keep forgetting to click the actual rest village. So we'll, we'll load this map up, head home. But yeah, we'll end the uh, the episode here for future tubers. And uh, we've got a bit of an idea of what's going on now. We've got a kind of a hub with a bit of a house in it. We've got some quests to do, some villagers to go look for. And uh, I'd say a fair number of objectives. So that'll keep us busy for a while. And uh, that'll be what we do next episode. We'll pick one and start working at it. There we go. Regular resting. And yeah, you get full heal during rests. And we should have all of our spells back and all the goodies. And next level up, once we get there, should be... Or next sort of tier of level ups will get us level 4 uh, mage magic, actually. Because we're uh, technically a level 6 preserver. Level 7 preserver will get level 4 spells. And I think our, like we're very close to hitting level 7 four fighter on China. I believe that's when our attack multiplier will go up at level 7 fighter. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's 7. And um, that's pretty nice too. So uh, my dual class will get that very soon. Um, triple class is going to take a little bit longer to get to 7 fighter. You know, we got from level... 222 to level 666 very quickly, I would say. But the way the experience doubles every level, getting all the way to 999 will be difficult. Like, that's definitely... That's going to require a bit of grinding or completing every quest in the game. But I think we can expect dual class characters to get to 99 pretty easily, and triple class characters will get close to it. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, like I said, that's all for this one. Uh, I've had a pretty good session, I think. Thanks for watching, future tubers. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.